report speaks about changes in matter. Have you ever thought about what happens to the solid matter when they are heated? Look what happens here to the ice cream. Just keep in mind, the ice cream is a solid matter. When it's heated, it becomes a liquid state. So is that in the ice cream only or in all solids? I guess the right answer is going to be in all solids. Look here, the ice cube melts. So it changes from the solid state into liquid state by heating. Maybe that happens in the ice cube or the ice cream. But does it happen to the iron or the pieces of solids that are really hard? Let's take a look here. I guess if you give a solid matter enough temperature and enough amount of heat, it melts. It totally turns from the solid state into liquid state, also by heating. So this is a general rule. Any solid matter becomes liquid state by heating. We call this process melting. So the melting is the change of the matter from the solid state into liquid state by heating. But why does this happen? Mr. C, because of heating. What changes solids into liquid? Why the heat affects the solid and makes them become liquids like that? Would you like to discover the answer? Let's go ahead. Here we go. In front of you here, the solid particles. Let's see what's gonna happen when we heat them up. So if we have a solid matter, the solid matter gains heat energy. So look, when the heat transfers to the solid particles, the particles gain the thermal energy, then they start moving faster. When they move faster, they go away a little from each other, so they become liquid. Aha! Uh -huh. Let's repeat it one more time. Here are the solid particles. Look what happens when we heat them. When we heat them, the solid particles gain the thermal energy, then they start moving faster. When they move faster, they gain extra kinetic energy. This is why they are moving faster. Then they turn into far away particles from each other, which means they become liquid. They become particles in a liquid state. Okay, so this is why melting occurs. So the melting occurs due to gaining the thermal energy and changing the thermal energy into kinetic energy in the internal particles of all solids. So the solid particles are changing into liquid particles. Actually, they are the same particles, but the only difference here in the amount of the energy that they have. The solid particles have less kinetic energy and less thermal energy. When they gain heat, the particles start moving faster, so they become a liquid matter. The next question is going to be a little tricky. What happens if we heat the liquid? So in front of you here are three examples of different liquids. What happens when we heat them? Look and tell me. It seems like when they gain thermal energy, the liquid inside here comes out in a form of water vapor. Here, the sun evaporates the water, so the water turns completely into gas. Even here, in this cooking pan, the liquid inside becomes gas. So, it seems like the liquid state becomes gaseous state by heating. But this is not melting. That's a different process, which is known as evaporation. Evaporation, it's the change of the matter from the liquid state into gaseous state by heating. How and why does this happen? Let's discover. These are the particles of the liquid. They are moving freely more than the solid. They have more kinetic energy and they have more spaces between them. When they gain thermal energy, look here what happens. When the particles gain more thermal energy, the thermal energy is changing into more kinetic energy. That makes the particles move so fast. When they move so fast, they're gonna be away from each other. So the spaces between the particles going to be so large spaces. So if they have so large spaces, extra kinetic energy, that means the matter has been changed completely from a liquid into gas. 
So the gaseous state particles are formed due to gaining of thermal energy in the liquid particles. And this is why the evaporation occurs due to increasing the thermal energy the liquid state particles gain this thermal energy and convert them into kinetic energy so they start moving away so they start moving faster and the distances between them increases and finally they become particles in a gaseous state but right now we have something different have you ever seen that before I guess that was one of the common situations that I was totally confused when I see them. When a cold bottle of water is placed in front of me, I see water droplets out, especially if it was very cold water bottle and the temperature outside was a little hot. So I see always the water droplets are coming here. I was here. wondering when I was young, these are water droplets are coming from the bottle, from inside the bottle, outside but that's something different here the water droplets are not formed because of the water inside is coming outside this is not the reason these water droplets are formed due to the condensation of the water vapor in the room on the cool surface what i'm trying to say here look the sun every day evaporates the water the water turns completely into water vapor to form clouds these clouds rain one more time in winter when the temperature is reduced when the temperature decreases the clouds rain again think about it when the temperature decreases that means we are cooling a gas the gaseous state which is found in clouds are cooled so when we cool them they condense they turn into water droplets so the gaseous state becomes a liquid state by cooling. It makes sense. When we cool a gas, it becomes liquid. And it makes sense right now to discover the reason behind forming water droplets at the outer surface of a cool water bottle. So the water bottle here is cool surface. It's very cold. And the water vapor in the atmosphere around us is a little hot. When the particles of the water vapor find cool surface they condense on it from the outer surface it seems like the gaseous state finding here a cool surface so the gaseous state going to be cooled into liquid state let's discover how does this happen and why so what happens here in the particles of gases when we reduce the temperature when we decrease the temperature so the temperature that makes them moving quickly because the thermal energy has been converted before into kinetic energy inside them that's what makes them moving so fast like that imagine what's gonna happen when we take this energy back when we reduce the temperature when we decrease the temperature what's gonna happen to the kinetic energy just think and here is the answer look the heat reduction when we cool them down so they become cooler right now which means the particles of the gas in front of you here has been converted totally into liquid so they come back into the previous state which was liquid this is why reducing the temperature converts the gaseous state into liquid state one more time and this is why the water vapor in the room around you is condensing over a cool surface because the particles that were moving so fast now they cool now down they are cooler than before so they have been condensed into water droplets they become back from gas to water again so this process is known as condensation condensation it's the change in the matter from the gaseous state into liquid state but here not by heating it's by cooling but do we have other changes happen by cooling? I guess the answer is yes. We have another change occurs to the matter by cooling. Look here, we have liquid water, and here we have liquid water, and there we have liquid water. But they are not no longer water. It seems like they have been changed completely into solid crystals of the ice. Look here, the water becomes ice. The water the liquid becomes solid the liquid becomes a solid the liquid becomes solid so it seems like when we keep cooling the matter it has been changed completely from liquid state into solid state 
We call this actually freezing. It's the change of the matter from the liquid state into solid state by cooling. And let's watch how does this happen carefully. It happens especially with the liquid state when they are cooled, when we reduce the temperature, when we decrease the temperature, it seems like they lose the kinetic energy that they have. And then they return back one more time into solid state. And that's the deep meaning of freezing. So finally, that's a summary about the previous part. There are two changes of matter occur by heating. The first one is melting. The second one is evaporation. There are some questions to answer here. The first one, give reason for. The solid state becomes liquid state by heating. Because the thermal energy, when it's gained by the solid particles, they start moving freely away from each other and the spaces between them increase. So, the answer of this question is going to be, if the question was, give reason for, the solid state becomes liquid state by heating or melting of solid state into liquid state by heating, the answer is supposed to be, the because between the particles increases and the motion of the particles or the kinetic energy of the particles of the solid state increases, so they become liquid. The same question is going to be here. Why the liquid becomes gas sometimes? In some conditions, the liquid is a changing into water vapor or the water becomes vapor. In some conditions, the water becomes water vapor. So give reason for the liquid state becomes gaseous state due to gaining thermal energy. So the particles will move faster and the spaces between them increases. The next kind of changes here are two main kinds but they are occurred by cooling. So the first one is the condensation, changing the gaseous state into liquid state by cooling. So here the matter is going to be different in the question. If it was give reason for, the water vapor becomes liquid state or becomes water or condenses into water, the answer is supposed to be because the thermal energy is decreasing so the particles will move slowly and the spaces between them decreases so the particles going to be close to each other here the next question about the liquid the liquid state becomes solid state by cooling we call this process freezing so why freezing occurs to liquid or why the liquid state becomes solid state sometimes Due to decreasing the temperature, the kinetic energy of the particles of the liquid state decreases and the spaces between them decreases, so the particles will form a solid state one more time. Finally, that's a summary about all changes of matter, melting, evaporation occurred by heating, condensation and freezing occurred by cooling. Another assessment could be a really interesting assessment for you. In front of you, three main flashcards. You need just to expect what's the clue behind, what is the word or the statement that is written behind. The first one is matter. So what do you think going to be behind this flashcard? You might be thinking about maybe states of matter or the properties of matter or the meaning of the matter. So let's check your prediction. Matter is everything that has mass and volume or anything around us or everything around us the following one here anything or everything what do you think going to be behind this flash card i guess you catch it correctly it's gonna be matter because everything or anything refers to matter here everything that has mass and volume and I guess here you are sure about your answer, which is going to be matter. Give yourself a big hand. What does it mean has mass and volume? What does it mean mass and what does it mean volume? Let's start by the volume. In front of you here a cup and this cup was empty or full of gases a few seconds ago. And we can see right now water is poured inside the cup to occupy the space inside. This is what's meant to buy volume. Volume, it's the space occupied by a matter. The space that has been taken up by a matter. Whatever this matter is. So an example in front of you right now is the water. That's a matter. And it takes up the space, it takes up the volume inside the cup. Let's understand more about this example. Look here. It seems like we have large space. 
When we pour more water, look what happens to the space. The space decreases. That means the water takes up more space. When we add more, the water takes up more space. When we add more, the water takes up more space. And finally, the water takes up the volume of the cup at all. It takes up a space or occupies a this space. This is what meant by volume. A space occupied by a matter or when the matter is occupying a space. In front of you here are different examples. Here we have a space occupied by flour, which is a matter. A space occupied by chocolates. A space occupied by toys. A space occupied by fruits, vegetables, or a space occupied by anything. This is what's meant by volume, or a space occupied by a matter. And right now, let's talk about the mass. The mass is a word that describes how heavy or light things are. So how heavy things are here, let's take a look on the first one. We have a small amount of apples, so they represent a small mass. Medium amount of apples represent medium amount of mass. Large amount of apples, that means they are heavy, so they represent large mass. The word mass represents how heavy things are. The final assessment that we have on this part is represented in front of you in some flashcards. Can you predict what is behind each flashcard here? Let's get started by the first one. Matter? I guess you are getting better in this game. It's everything or anything around us that has mass and volume. Okay, mass. Perfect. The mass here refers how heavy things are or the amount of the matter in an object. The following one going to be volume or the space occupied by the matter. Here, everything that has mass and volume. I guess that's correct. Matter, perfect. I'm gonna leave the rest flashcards for you. Fill them down, try to predict what is the correct description or the correct answer that is found behind each flashcard. Don't forget to send me back them in the comments below when you finish to receive your upcoming gift. The last two pieces of information in our today's topic going to be the measuring tools of the matter. For example, we measure the length of the matter by the ruler. We can measure the mass of the matter by the balance scales. We can measure the temperature of the matter by the thermometer. Keep in mind the size of the matter particles are not the same. We have microscopic matter, very, very, very small matter like the blood cells or the particles of the matter. And we cannot see them without a microscope. So sometimes we need the electronic microscope or the light microscope to see the small things. But the particles of the matter cannot be seen without the electronic microscope. It's the only tool that we can zoom in and use it to see the particles of the matter. One of the really interesting activities that I really like is the modeling. In front of you here, models of particles and three empty squares. You need to use them in building up a model of the solid state particles, liquid state particles, and gaseous state particles. By the way, you are not the only one that build up a model. Scientists use models sometimes to explain to you something. For example, if we need to study the Earth, is it easy? I guess it's gonna be a really hard task to study the Earth if you are outside. So we can use the Earth model to study the Earth. Sometimes we build up models for the solar system to visit them all and facilitate their studying. Finally, the very, very, very small particles or the tiny germs like the bacteria, viruses, and so on. So these are microscopic living organisms. We can study them if we have electronic microscope, but without microscope, it's the only way to study them using a model. So the model here, it's a copy, a copy of a real object or a copy of a real something here. So it's a copy similar to this real thing or similar to the real object. The final activity that I have for you here is a representation of the water cycle in nature, which represents the three states of matter. I need you to write for me description for what happens here. The matter changes from which state to which state and how does this happen? By the season changing in nature. 
When you finish, send me the result in the comments below to be rewarded by a huge gift. Lastly, don't forget to make like and subscribe for my YouTube channel if you didn't make yet. Don't forget to send me back all results in the comments below. See you in the next time and goodbye.